Now, patents, I think, are especially interesting because they're the only one that really does run out in a fairly short time period, at least in the grand scheme of things, in that patents will not last for decades on end. They usually expire after about 20 years, and that's it. Whereas copyrights, trademarks, uh, and other intellectual property can last, in effect, almost indefinitely for very long periods of time. In return for the relatively short time application of a patent, one is given greater exclusivity, greater control than in the field of, say, copyrights. What we require for a patent is much more. We require that something be new, that it be uh, useful, and that it be non-obvious. And there are distinct meanings to each of these. The Patent Office endeavors to evaluate each application as to whether it really meets that threshold, new, uh, useful, and non-obvious. Uh, there have been criticisms of the Patent Office for, for instance, permitting business method patents in the late 1990s into the early 2000s, uh, which really should not necessarily have been granted, that really were for things which were obvious or which had already been done for a long period of time, but people just hadn't bothered to, to seek a patent for it. Let me give you one example, uh, uh, albeit one that's rather crude, taken from my engineering brother-in-law. I have an engineer brother-in-law who apparently will clean his ears out with a paper clip. Now, I brought along an extremely large paper clip. I don't think my brother-in-law cleans out his ears with one this big. There have actually been patents granted for over 300 different types of paper clips. But let's imagine that my brother-in-law decides to get a patent on somehow his specially designed paper clip for cleaning out ears. Could he get a patent? I think he might. I think he might because the argument would be that it is certainly useful. I mean, heretofore, uh, my brother-in-law has been cleaning his ears out with a non-sterilized, perhaps sharp paper clip. What he really needs is one that is blunter, which is softer, which is more like a Q-tip without being a Q-tip. He also would need to show not only practicality, but he'd have to show that it's new. And I guess the question would be, are there other people out there who've been doing this same thing? I haven't heard of anyone other than my crazy brother-in-law cleaning his ears out with paper clips, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other fools, I mean brothers-in-law, out there doing things like this. And then the third issue would be, assuming that my brother-in-law is sort of a pioneer in this field, is, is it in fact a non-obvious? And I think that's where he may really find some difficulty in getting a patent, because I would contend, and maybe I'm just the grouchy, younger, lawyer-like brother-in-law, but I would contend that it really isn't a non-obvious approach. This is pretty darn obvious. If you think about it, you can put all sorts of tiny things, long prongs, etc., into various orifices, including your ears, if you want to. And so I would argue it's fairly obvious something like this could be done, that you could modify a paper clip or some other metal prong to make it something to clean out your ears. And without something a little bit more advanced, the argument might be, even though it's new, even though it's practical, it just isn't anything other than obvious. The other example I would give is pretty much anything which is stationary by simply adding a wheel to it or wheels to it, does that make it really something new, let alone something non-obvious? I think a lot of courts would look at that and say, okay, nobody's done this before, but it doesn't take much of a brain to realize that you can make something mobile or portable by adding wheels to it. If that's all you're doing, is that sufficient to get a patent? These things go in trends, but the trends go back and forth in terms of how rigorous are the patent office regulators and the courts in terms of evaluating that three-pronged test for novelty, non-obviousness, and usefulness.